and he's still giving you advice. Maybe you two were actually meant to be together. But um, I wouldn't go about it in the crazy, crazy ass stalker chick kind of way. Um, you gotta let the, you, we. I don't know what the future is gonna hold for you. You don't know what the future is gonna hold for you. You can only find out. Uh, I would suggest that you talk to him, find out what the hell is going on, because if he still has his feelings for you, he will be truthful about it. Either way. So I'm going to wish you luck with this and uh, best of luck with your future, you know, your future uh, um, wellness. Uh, so I'll try to send some good vibes your way, helping you heal. Okay. This is from a young lady who is very paranoid about her boyfriend. She asks, could he be cheating or talking to someone else? My boyfriend came out over Saturday evening, and we just basically had sex. We, he didn't even stay Sunday morning for breakfast, which he always does. He had to go home to do food shopping and laundry, which he didn't get to do Saturday for whatever reason. I asked him, what, you don't want to stay? And he just outright said no. Then he tried to be nice, said he can't because he has a lot to do. We touched each other all day after he left. But then today, he asked me to call him when I get home. I called him, and he didn't answer. Ten minutes later, he called me back and said he was busy with laundry and was in a bad mood. He told me to call him, and he pushed me away. I don't know what to think of his recent actions, but nothing has thus shown, far shown that there are signs of him talking to another woman. Okay, the, but nothing has thus far shown, shown that there are signs of him talking to another woman. Am I overreacting? Signed, Paranoid. Dear Paranoid, um, he, he's probably going through, I, I don't know if there may be someone else in the picture. Uh, in my experience, uh, sometimes it has happened, sometimes the, per, the other half has actually had a rough day and doesn't really want to talk about it. Maybe something very traumatic has happened to him that he doesn't really want to talk about, that he's maybe afraid that you might freak out over. And if that be the case, let him tell you in his own time. And uh, maybe the worst case scenario, which we're hoping it's not, um, I would hate to see you catch him with his pants down. Um, and it, I believe in a relationship, honesty is always the best policy. And with his recent actions, if he's not telling you, you need to find out the truth. Um, when he's more calmed down and when he's not pulling this crap, sit him down and say, hey, you know, I'm a little worried about you. And um, tell him, say, hey, I'm worried about you. What's what's going on? And, and if you two have been together a long time, there should be enough of that trust there that uh, that that you two can work things out. Because... If you two have enough trust, there's nothing that you two can't work out. But if it's somebody else and you two have been dating a short time, well, I hate to say this, um, maybe the relationship should go bye-bye if he's all of a sudden changing changing his demeanor. Um, but, yeah, that, it does sound a little suspicious to me. So I would probably, I don't know, uh, I would be a little patient. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be bitchy about it. I play Nancy Drew or something. Find out what's bugging him and then talk to him about it. But that's my advice. Okay. This is from a young man signed confused. He's asking, why is she doing this to me? Me and my girl broke up a few weeks ago. She said she didn't want to talk to me anymore. Last week she started calling me and after a couple of days she said, I love you and I miss you. This past weekend she just showed up at my house to stay the night and we had sex. She told me she can't be with me right now, but she will always love me. I don't know what to do because I'm so in love with her, and a big part of me tells me I shouldn't be. I'd have to write a book on all the stuff that we've done to each other. I just need to know what to do because my heart can't take it anymore. Signed, confused. Ooh. Well, I would say it depends on how long you two have been together. I mean, if she broke up with you a few weeks ago and she said she didn't want to talk to you or see you anymore, but she's giving you mixed messages. 
I would say, hey, you know, what the hell is up with this? Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. I would say pretty much what the hell is up with this, and um, honesty is pretty much the best policy here. I mean, if she just showed up at your house and stayed the night and did the boom boom with you, but she says she can't be with you right now, I mean, she's probably, she's probably got something going on in her life that's very traumatic, and she just, she maybe she just doesn't feel like she can be in that trusting situation enough to tell you why she can't be with you. Maybe she's going through a lot of mental stress. Maybe she's going through a lot of trauma. Um, maybe something happened that she's too afraid to tell you about. Uh, I mean, there's many, many different case scenarios. Maybe, you know, worst case scenario is She's probably seeing somebody else we don't know. And she's probably having second thoughts about it. And you were probably the best thing she ever had. And she's probably, you know, probably regretting her decision on leaving you. I don't know. But um, unless I know more, that's all I can tell you for now. Okay. This is from a guy signed hurting. He said, so the girl I love cheated on me three months ago on accident when she was drunk. She fell into depression for three months, and I was pretty sad and angry, too. The cheated was just a kiss, but it hurt all the same. She wants us to try again, and I'm afraid of getting hurt again. She changed so dramatically in the fact that she never used to drink or smoke weed and hated those who did, but now has changed into doing it every day and weekend. I am okay with all that, but I just don't want her to cheat again or hurt me like that. She doesn't want to get back. She doesn't want to get back now, but in the summer. But is this a good idea or should I move on? I've been trying to get over the cheating, but it still hurts. She's going to a party tomorrow and will get drunk and high. But she says she will control and limit herself when we start dating. Someone please help and let help let me know what to do. Signed, hurting. Um, sounds to me like. Your ex-girlfriend has fallen into some very dangerous habits. And, um, well, when you smoke a little weed and you drink a little alcohol, you tend to get a little stupid. Uh, I know from experience. Uh, even though the cheating was just a kiss, um, uh, alcohol and uh, smoking a little weed and drinking a little booze can kind of impair your judgment. And... Uh, if she was depressed for about three months and she starts spiraling out of control, she's probably got a very addictive personality. And and if she's going to get stoned and high or high and drunk every night, um, that's kind of a warning sign that maybe she's got a problem. So um, when you two start dating, if you two start dating, if she decides to give all this up, Hopefully, um, if her family doesn't know, make her family aware of her habits. Try to get some intervention in be before, you know, it's, it's too late. Because I, I know it's really hard to see somebody you love destroy themselves. It really is. Um, unfortunately, I had a f girlfriend of mine who, uh, who dealt with who dealt with who was engaged to a guy t for two years he was a drug addict he smoked marijuana he drank every day he uh, did crack cocaine and he kept telling her I'll quit I'll quit I'll quit and he never quit I mean he would quit for a while like I have a feeling she might quit for a while but then it's gonna be you know once you get into that stuff uh, you, um, marijuana eventually may not do it for her. It, she might get into the harder stuff. We don't know. I don't know her, but it's, it's a little, it's, it's a very scary situation if you think about it. But I hope that, that, um, anyway, that she 
uh, does some healing for herself. And as for you, um, I I don't think maybe you should you wait. You should wait around for her. I think maybe you should you should move on, Be- move on with your life. Start the healing process because that's just going to be something that. Because if you continue to have her in your life and she's going to continue to do these things when she promises to quit, um, this is like. (coughs) 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 Shit. Um, Excuse me. This is a character. Jeez. Sorry about that. Live snafu on TV. This is a characteristic of most addicts. And uh, uh, my personal advice, I believe that you are better off without her because she's, she's slowly destroying herself. She's slowly destroying her body. And that's not what you want. That's not what you want to see. So I believe strongly um, you'll make the right choice. And... and uh, Hopefully you can heal from this because you'll survive this. So uh, anyway, that's it for my advice corner tonight. It is 8.56. I'm going to be going off the air in about a couple minutes. But I want to thank my crew for coming in because without my crew, I would not be having a show tonight. So thank you so much. Uh, I also want to thank the staff and the volunteer, well, the volunteers here at Portland Community Media. Uh, for letting it, giving us a facility to do what we do because uh, Portland Community Media and cable access in general is the last frontier of freedom of speech. And we either got to use it or lose it, people. So write your congressman, write your senator, tell them how important cable access really is because we would not, because without it, we would not have this virtual soapbox to get our voices out to the people. It's for it's television for the people, by the people, and so we need to uh, we need more TV like this on instead of the reality stuff that we see that is being crammed down our throats every day. Uh, the corporations are very guilty of it. Uh, Fox News, uh, MTV, VH1, they're guilty. Guilty, the, the four major networks, they're guilty of spoon-feeding us all this crap. That's why I don't watch TV anymore, because it's mostly reality television. And it's not really reality. So, and we're also looking for new producers here at Portland Community Media. And we also are having orientations here once every so often. So if you have a show idea, we're always looking for producers. We're always looking for new blood and we are always welcoming of new people. Um, I am Alexandra Paris signing off. If you are wondering what you were watching just now, I, you're watching the Alexandra Paris show. The next live show will be coming up on April 20th, 2011 on channel 23 at 8 p.m. Um, if you would like to email me, email me at Alexandra Paris TV show at gmail.com. If you want to follow me on YouTube, go to www.youtube.com backslash Alexandra Paris Show. Twitter, twitter.com backslash Alex Paris TV 